Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, uh, playing some Downwell. Uh, this is a game I have played before. Uh, it's I, I have the Steam version, I played it for a little while, um, like a couple of years ago maybe. Um, I remember it being pretty good, but I don't remember much beyond that, so this is sort of a first thoughts look at it, but we'll see how we go. Um, so yeah, Downwell. I don't know why I had to pick a user there. Um, alright. <laughs> so you can see it's clearly a very retro aesthetic. You've got all the pixels everywhere that you can see. Oh. Okay, um, I guess I'll play a usual style. It's the only one that's available. Okay, so here's the deal. You're playing as this little blobby fellow here, and you can jump around, and in midair you have, like, gun boots, I think, basically, that you can use to hover a little bit and attack downwards. Uh, you can also jump on enemies, so that's good too. I believe the idea is the red parts hurt you, but you can touch the white parts of enemies or something like that. And yeah, it's... Basically, you just want to keep going down the well, and hopefully not die. It's kind of a roguelike arcade platformer, I guess. Also, yeah, you can change your weapon, there we go. Now I have a shotgun instead of the previous pistol or whatever. So I have fewer shots, but they're going to do more damage. So that's good. And yeah, you just keep going down. I think all the buttons do the same thing. Yeah, it looks like it. Ah! Okay, that's zone one done. <laughs> okay, and then you get to pick an upgrade. I believe these are completely randomized, so... Uh... Gunpowder blocks sound good to me. So what happens with that is you shoot a block and it basically explodes everything else around it because the blocks launch out bullets now. Ah! Okay, so yeah, you don't want to touch the red parts of the enemies, but if you touch the white parts, you're okay. Also, these little time freezy portal thingies are good. You can buy stuff. I can only afford a battery, but I will have a battery. Thank you. Can I hurt you? No, I can't. It's not like Spelunky. Oh, in many other ways, it is like Spelunky. So you get the idea. It's a very like conceptually simple arcadey platformer sort of thing. Where you're going down a well and you have gun boots. <laughs> Which yeah, are both a weapon and a way to adjust your jump trajectory. Kinda like Cappy. <laughs> Actually, more like Flood, really, but, you know, same basic idea. Laser, yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> you can see the monsters are getting a bit harder to deal with. A lot of them have all red, and you've got those homing eye thingies and stuff. Very simple gaming concept. The controls are very good. Uh, I'm using the um, D-pad or the D 
buttons on the left Joy-Con at the moment. You can use the analog stick, but it's not actually analog control, so there's not much point. Uh... Also, pressing up and down does nothing as far as I know, so it's just side sideways that matters. And I'm dead. <laughs> so yeah, you get the idea. It's a very arcadey sort of platformer. Uh, that's using... It's using a roguelike sort of deal to it because, as you can see, you have permadeath and you go down the well again, and that resets the whole arrangement of the game. Um, I believe the levels have certain layouts, but the actual, like, no, not layouts, like the themes are consistent. You get cavern and then something else, but the actual levels are randomized, basically like Splunky. This game is quite similar to Splunky in a lot of ways whole, you know, you have four health thing, for example. <laughs> uh, I believe if you manage to grab a bunch of gems without taking damage, you get, like, a bonus of some kind? I'm not sure. I forget how that works. The game isn't really forthcoming with instructions. Here's a bunch of gems, you can just shoot that and all these gems will pop out. There we go, gem high, yeah. I believe that means you get more gems from everything you do. Kind of like in Crypt of the Necrodancer where you get like a coin spree or whatever for getting the timing right. So yeah, these are, these are randomized, you can see. I've gotten different ones this time. Uh, I think Gunplayer Blocks are still good though. I just want to go in all the side rooms. You, sometimes you don't want to change weapons, so it's a bit annoying that you have to. But, but getting more health is always nice, so you know. It's certainly a lot easier to heal than it is in Splunky. Uh... You can also use the shoulder buttons to shoot instead of the A or B buttons. That might be a bit more comfortable depending on how you're playing. I guess all the buttons do the same thing. It's a one button game, really. Uh... Give me the apple, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much can't attack upwards, so you gotta watch out for enemies that follow you from above. Uh, that's something to be careful of. <laughs> I don't know if there's like a weapon that does let you attack upwards. It might be like a later one you unlock or something. But I'm guessing it's mostly just downwards attack because of the way the game works. Oops. Game over. Oh, I unlocked something. Yeah, um, overall gems, like, that's sort of an experience thing that unlocks more stuff you can do. Uh, I think? I how you switch palettes. Oh, just here. So yeah, you can see down more palettes the default. You have this matcha palette. There's a bunch more, I think, but I haven't unlocked them yet, obviously. Uh, not much you can change here. You can turn the vibration off. You can't change the controls beyond that. But because there's so few controls and they map to pretty much everything, it's probably okay. Uh... No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, I believe what that does, because the game is sort of vertical, it basically uses the wideness of the screen for all the verticality it can. So on a, on the regular screen, on the regular, you know, Switch portable screen, that would work out sort of okay, because you can, you know, turn the little tiny screen, but because I'm using a TV here, I can't really turn it. 
Uh, you can turn on a border like this if you want as well. Similar to Undertale, I guess. But yeah, I think I think Tate Tate Tate. Uh, I think that's like a brand of um like shmup games or something that use these vertical screens, and that's what they're referring to. Not really sure though. I think I like the regular red theme a bit better than this green one. It's only like one color anyway, so it doesn't really make a huge difference, but... Yeah, it's a very retro-inspired kind of... kind of arcade platformer. Uh, it would not be out of place to see this in an actual arcade, I would think. Uh... I don't know whether they made like an arcade version or something, it'd be cool if they did. But yeah, you've got just one button, which is mapped to basically every button on the controller. Uh, which makes you jump, and then if you're in mid-air, it makes you shoot. Depending on the weapon you have, you can sometimes hold down the button, do lots of shots in a row, or sometimes you need to actually press the button more than once, depending on you know, what weapon you have. Yeah, I think I want to change the palette back. Red's nicer. Oh, that's interesting. Instead of getting a health power up there, I got more charge. You can see it says 10 over there instead of 8 now. So I can actually use more shots in midair, which is handy because, you know, that gives you a bit of a hovering thing, like Flood. I'm not very good at this game, you may have noticed. <laughs> uh, shouldn't dead bodies because it's gonna explode. Fucking gems, that sounds like fun. I imagine you could play this with one Joy-Con rather than two, because the game is so simple. But you probably want digital controls because the game doesn't have analog input for moving around and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. Shop. Can I afford anything good? Uh, I can't afford a sushi, but I can afford a car battery. <laughs> okay, so now I have 12 shots in midair instead, which is pretty good. Yeah. Also, that guy gets very angry if you go over here, which is pretty funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, it's a very simple game, but it's very like well designed in terms of control and the amount of upgrades and content and stuff you've got to work with. Yeah! And between each level we get another upgrade, there we go. Um, try the rocket jump, that sounds like fun. Oh wow, okay. That's different. <laughs> okay, so the rocket jump actually damages things. It's like you have a little explosion surrounding the spot you jump from. That's pretty handy. Triple shot, yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> Okay, so that one you have to press the button more than once if you want more than one shot, you can't just hold it down.
Just get an achievement or something? Maybe. Um, I have the apple. There we go. Stats. Trophies. Okay, so yeah, the game does have like an achievement system built in, which is good because the Switch doesn't have those. Uh, what I just got was this one. Beat the first area. Bye, frogs. <laughs> Bye, stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, um, so the catacombs have, um, like a lava sort of thing going on. So you gotta watch out for this, uh, spike. Oh, it's spikes. Okay. Watch out for the spikes. Also, there's this whole ghosty sort of theme, as you can see. Lots of ghosts. And skeletons and things like that. As usual, red things can hurt you, other things cannot. Uh, I'll have an energy drink, that sounds good to me. Thank you. So yeah, it's getting quite a bit more difficult to avoid damage at this point. Um, <laughs> Casing still damage, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I would have got some progress on the thingy aqua palette. That's all. Uh, I don't know when you unlock styles, I think you need to do more stuff to do that. So, aqua, it's blue. Get some more colors. Lots of options. So yeah, you get the idea. It's a simple game, but it's it's very well well designed and well good to control, and it's a lot of fun. It's nothing like in the way of story or anything. It's just you know you jumped in a well, and that's the whole story. <laughs> uh, there's not like fall damage or anything, which is good because you're constantly falling. <laughs> Laser. Yeah. Give me them gems, yeah. <laughs> so Oh cool, I got something. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, I'll take the member's card. I'd like to be able to shop with discounts, that sounds pretty good. Also there's a shop right here now because of the member's card I have. Um, increase my charge. There we go. Yeah, this plays very well on the Switch. It's not like doing anything particularly Switch specific. There's no motion control or anything, so that's good, honestly. Uh... Rocket Jump was good. Let's have Rocket Jump again. 
And there should be a shop at the beginning of this level. Yep, there it is. Uh, I can get... I'll get the car battery. Thank you. So yeah, you get the idea of the game. I wouldn't call it like a deep game. There's not a whole lot of finesse or trick jumping or whatever. I mean, there sort of is. In that, you know, you're trying to chain jumps through enemies and stuff like that. But I don't know, it's it's fairly simple, but it's it's good. young. <laughs> I look exactly the same. I don't know what that did. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll heal 2 HP. Thank you. Thanks for the sushi. now. Mm. I'll heal up with the apple. There we go. Uh, I can buy the battery, so I guess I'll buy the battery. Thank you. Ah! Ah! Spikes! Didn't rack quickly enough. Oh dear, this is not going well. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh. Unlocked a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I have a new style now, so I'm going to show what that's about. Basically, uh, it's a different way of the game working, rather than having... Uh, you can see I'm sort of, I'm actually sort of floating above the, the ground here instead of just standing on it. I'm not quite sure what effect that has, but yeah, um, there's a couple of different styles that, they, they do affect gameplay in some way, but I, I don't know what. I think maybe you're safe from landing on certain hazards or something? I'm not sure. Seems to control about the same as before, though, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I do know it has an effect, but I don't know what the effect is. Um... Oh, also, uh, we have some new palette as well, which is... Yeah, it's like a Game Boy. Very, 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 uh, nostalgic for some. <laughs> I had a Game Boy Pocket, and it has slightly different colours, so I'm not really that familiar with the original Game Boy palette. Um, but, you know, I, I think this is pretty accurate, I think. Uh... I still like the original red palette the most, I think. I think it's nice and clear. 
lots of contrast between things that will kill you and things that you can kill. Kind of useless to have popping gems in this room because there's nothing above me, but out in the normal area is pretty good. <laughs> Ow. Ah! What is going on? Why are there so many of those eye things at the beginning of the game? <laughs> oh my goodness. Wasn't that far in. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get the difference between these two styles. Uh, I, see, I think some of the others it's more obvious, but I don't remember what they are, so we'll see. I don't know how long we're going to play it for. It's been about 25 minutes, so I'll probably start wrapping up the review soonish. Level one <laughs> again. doing well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Give me that apple. Yeah, the apple doesn't increase your maximum health, it just heals you, so that's something to watch out for. Because <laughs> the way it's phrased, it sounds like it might actually increase your maximum. It says gain 4 health, but it's, it's just healing you by, that, by 4 health. You know, the amount you start with, so if you haven't, you know, got any health upgrades, you can't enjoy the full benefits of that. Uh, I can't buy even a bit of a shop. That's like virtual boy? Let's have a look. Yep, virtual boy. <laughs> so if you wanted to not be able to tell which things can hurt you and which things can't, you can turn this palette on and it makes everything the same colour. So I would not recommend doing this. Um, unless you want an extra challenge, I guess.
I imagine if you've got some form of color blindness, then some of the palettes would, would work better than others. So the fact that they get unlocked through play is a little annoying. Um, but I mean, this mode is essentially colorblind for everyone because it's just red, so... <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. Uh, hot casings, there we go. I imagine the defaults would be mostly okay because there's a lot of contrast between the shade of red they've chosen and the, the white, but I mean, that's only for certain color blindnesses, not for all of them. Uh, let me just try. Uh, drop on the saturation like I did for that other video and just see how it looks. Oh yeah, that, that's pretty easy to tell apart. You can see you've got the white part and you've got like the greyish part and you can't touch the greyish part. Yeah, the, the, that works pretty well. Like with complete color blindness, I could play this fine. So that's cool. Uh, that rice ball, thank you. I don't know if one of the other color schemes would work better. Uh, I could try changing the palette around. V-Boy just looks sort of darker. <laughs> uh, that's still playable. You can see, like, that snail there is very, very dark. Whereas this, uh, turtle I can jump on is a different color. So, yeah, that works out nicely. Uh, imagine the aqua palette. Yeah, basically when you... When you when you, um, turn off the saturation, simulate, you know, full color blindness, um, everything just, it turns to white and gray, and the gray stuff is what hurts you. So that works out really well, actually. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm gonna put saturation back up, just to get the normal game again. There we go. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so this, that's down well. Um, it's a game that I would recommend. It's like, I think it's like $2 at the moment or something on the on the eShop. It's not very much. Um, I think it'd be a good game to have on the Switch because of the... Partly because of the way it has that, uh, tape mode or whatever. Tate? However you pronounce it. Um, because the Switch, you know, you can, you can rotate it with this little screen and you can play it vertically, um, which would be cool. Uh, it controls very well on the Switch as well. I wonder if the balloon does. <laughs> I have a balloon now. I don't know if it does anything or if it's cute. Uh, well, I just... I don't know what it did anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, Downwell is a game I would recommend. It's it's really cheap. I, I think it was like $2. And I think it's normally like 5 so, you know, I would go for it now, just because it's cheaper, but either way, it's pretty affordable. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, there's a lot of, like, stuff to this game, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you got some decent options, there's not a whole lot in here, but you don't really need a whole lot. Um, because the game's so simple, you don't really need remappable, remappable controls, using any button works, so that's fine. Uh, you've also got... Oh, wow, this is, like, web stuff. That's interesting. Most gems... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No way I can do that. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Uh, I like that there's a trophy system built into the game here for the achievements and stuff. Um, the Steam version, it used Steam achievements. I assume it would use, like, the native system's achievements, but Switch doesn't have those, so I'm glad they're still here as a thing to, to you know, work towards, to say, oh, hey, I would like to, um, have a level without killing any enemy, that sounds like fun, or without landing, <laughs> ground allergy, <laughs> uh, or getting a Sugoi combo, that's pretty funny, <laughs> <coughs> oh, I've got a bit of a throat thing, sorry about that, um, clean boots, an area without landing, wait, and a level without landing. Oh, I see. I see. So that one's much easier because an area consists of, like, four levels. Whereas whereas that one, you have to do all four of them without landing. I'm um, playing there's a hard mode. I guess I unlock that later. 
frugality. <laughs> get it? Done well? Because it's called down well? Get it? Get it? That's pretty funny. <laughs> Moltenai? I mean, I know that's Japanese. I don't know if it means not shooting or something. Um, I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, I would recommend this game. Um, I don't think the Switch version adds much. Oh, Motenai is a term of Japanese origin that has been used by environmentalists. A sense of regret over waste. The exclamation Motenai can translate as what a waste. Because you, you're, not, you're not wasting bullets. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's, that's actually super adorable. Um, wow combo, well combo. Uh, buy frogs, buy ghosts, buy squids, buy stuff. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, I would recommend playing this game uh, if you, you know, you like this kind of game. Because it's, you know, it's a randomized roguelike arcade platformer thing. Um, it does remind me of Spelunky in various ways, but it also plays quite differently to Spelunky. Um, and I, I don't think the Switch version adds very much. Um, the fact that the Switch itself is easy to rotate into a vertical orientation for this Tate mode, I suppose, would be... Okay, I have to look up whether it's Tate or Tate. <laughs> Boop. Uh, mode. Yeah, can you flip the flip the monitor? Tabletop. Yeah. Uh, there is actually a, a gadget you can get to clip the Joy-Cons onto a vertically oriented switch. Uh, it's called a flip grip. So you could use one of those to play in Tate mode handheld, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I don't have one of those, um, and I can't record while I'm doing that because I need to go through the dock anyway, but that would be a cool thing to do if you wanted to play... Uh, games like this one, uh, like Downwell, which I believe is mentioned in the list here, yeah. And there's actually a bunch of other games that support that too, by the looks of things. Uh, a bunch of Atari flashback games, um, uh, a bunch of other shooters and stuff. Uh, Namco Museum, uh, various pinball games and stuff, so various things that like that, that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, um... But regardless, even if you're not using that, I think this is still very playable with, you know, the standard orientation, and you could use Tate mode with just the switch itself, like, detached, without a grip, without any trouble. That would work fine. Uh, if you wanted to play it that way, you could just, you know, sit the switch up vertically on, like, a stand or something, uh, if you happen to have one, and that would work out okay. Um, you can also just play it on a screen like this, and it would probably work fine just on the Switch's screen handheld without having to flip it as well. So, you know, it's a it's a very simple game. It's very fun, I think, and I would recommend playing it. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of unlockables, too. You've got all these different uh, color palettes, um, which, you know, doesn't mean much, especially if you happen to be colorblind, in which case they'll look pretty much the same. But uh, it's, it's a nice feature. And this style select, I assume that these are, are like more obviously different than this first one. I seem to remember there being like one that's a hard mode and stuff like that, but I, I haven't, I haven't unlocked them yet, so I don't remember. Um, but yeah, um, that is Downwell, a game that I would recommend you get. Uh, if you've already got it, and you don't like feel there's a lot of benefits to the Switch version, then probably don't get it again. But if you, you know, you want to play it on the go, or you want to be able to do the whole vertical orientation thing, um, then yeah, go ahead, and you'll probably enjoy it. And that's about it there. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope this gave you an idea of what the game's like, and whether you might want to play it. And yeah, bye!